All right, so in our last video, we covered the introduction and basics overview of how to set up a lab vault simulation board. Uh, I've still got that set up. As you can see, I've got my DC motor connected. And now what I want to cover is how to start taking measurements using our metering window, our data table, as well as graph. Um, to do that, I'm just going to follow along with exercise 2-1. I'm not going to follow it exactly. I'm going to skip some steps, but I just want to highlight how to use all these features. So the first thing to, to recognize is in step four, you need to start the data acquisition software and open the setup configuration DC motor one. You'll see a little note here. If you're using the LVSIM-EMS, which we are, you must use the import option in the file menu to open the configuration. So what that's referring to is, if I was to click on this metering window, it's going to pop up a meter here. But when I do that, when I go and select layout, it's going to be layout two. This still isn't the correct metering window. I need to have it set up for a DC motor. And to do that, if I close this, I can go file import.dia, DAI, import from server, in this case, I'm going to use the DC motor, but if you're doing an AC exercise, I'd be using the AC motor one. So select DC motor one and import. Again, you'll see this metering window pop up. It's going to pull it off to the side. We need to select layout two. Click OK. And now that's ready to go. Just keep in mind this option will change, so you need to read the instructions each time. Um, from here, Whenever we open this metering window, we need to set it to a continuous refresh. And when we do this, it means that now the data acquisition software is continuously refreshing these values. If this is turned off, we would have to hit this each time, the single refresh, and then it would only show you the values for that one click. So let's make sure that we've got continuous refresh selected. I'm now gonna make this metering window slightly smaller. Have this still selected to the side. The next thing I need to do is I need to make some connections. So again, I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm going to disregard this step here in step five. I scroll down and I'm now going to make the connection as per uh, figure 2-14. So you can see here we've got a, fig a, sorry, a variable DC power supply. We've got one voltmeter indicated as E1, and we've got a current meter indicated as I1. There's a positive um, symbol on each of these, indicating the positive for the I's and the positive for the E's, and then a negative on either side, which would be represented in the black. If I zoom in on this data acquisition module, you'll notice that there's a 4A and a 40A. This means that if I connect into this port, I4 would be connect, um, connected to a 4 amp meter, if I connect it across this one and this one, it would now be connected to a 40 amp meter. For the sake of these exercises, you don't need the 40, we can stick with the 4 amp. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out again and make the connection. So we can see our variable DC power supply here. I'm going to change this back to red. And then I'm just going to click on the 7 and drag it across to the positive of E1. And you can see here, I also need to connect to the positive of I1. And then I can either complete the circuit on this side or I can continue on, which I will do from the negative of I1 to the first terminal of the DC motor armature, like so. Now I'm gonna change my wire color to blue and I'm gonna finish off the circuit. So I'm gonna go out of the number two terminal of the DC armature through to the negative of the power supply. And then I'm also going to connect up the negative of E1 to the power supply. You don't need to worry about this dashed line. This dashed line represents the pulley that we've engaged in the previous video. Um, I just need to do this circuit now. So I'm going to go from my fixed DC power supply disregard this and connect straight into the positive of I2. And then I'm going to come out of I2, connect to the shunt winding and the rear of the stat. So I'm going to change this back to red. 
I'm going to come out of my positive of my fixed power supply up to I2. Out of I2, I'm going to go to the number 5 terminal or shunt winding. I'm going to connect up number 6 to 7. And then I'm going to finish it off, changing this back to blue, connecting 8 to my negative terminal. Now that I've got a circuit connected, it means I can start to use some more of the uh, functionality of this. So I'm going to get rid of this for now and keep that metering window open. I'm going to put this into the center like so. Now we're going to look at how we can actually use these. So first thing is our power supply. We've got a power switch and a voltage control knob. To use the power supply, I just need to left click on. You'll notice the switch flick down. You'll notice our three lights are turned on. We've also got a field current in our metering window here. And we've got a voltage control knob. So if we were to click and hold, we can drag this and turn it up. On this, it says 0 to 100. And this is representing the percentage. So 0, 10, 20, 60, 70, 80, through to 100. On our DC motor, we have a field control knob for the rear stat that we can use. So in one of the exercises, it's going to ask you to change it to 0 0.21, 21, like so. So now we know how to set up our power supply by turning on and off the power switch, as well as setting the voltage control knob. We know how to manipulate the field rear stat control knob. The last thing to do is learn how to use the four quadrant dynamator power supply. So we can go ahead and we can turn this on. You can tell that it's on because this screen is now light blue with dis uh, displaying values. You'll notice that the torque value is flashing. That's because it's not activated yet. If we click start, it will activate it. But first things first, we need to do this as per step three of the uh, experiment guide. If you're using the four quadrant diameter power supply model 98960-2, turn it on by its power input switch to the on position, press and hold the function button for three seconds to have the uncorrected torque values on the display of the four quadrant dynamometer power supply. This is indicated by NC. So what that means is this function button here, we just need to click it and hold for three seconds and you'll see NC appear here. The next step is to apply a torque value. So if I want to apply anything, I'm going to click on this symbol up here, which is our four quadrant dynamometer power supply. It's going to open up this new sub menu. When it's open, I'm just going to press start to start up the system again. You'll notice that the speed is now here, the torque, the power, and the energy. And then I can simply either type in here a value or I can twist this to increase the torque value. So you can see as I twist this, the torque value here is growing and we should start to see this one change when it engages. And there you go. So I'm going to increase this to 0.2. And you can see now I have 0 0.201. When you're doing your exercises, make sure that you use this window and not this window here. This one's for making the settings, but you need to ensure that you use the other window to use your measurements. So with this running, you can see values continuously refreshing. We can make our changes in this window, but we need a third window, which is called our data table. Show you again. So if you click on data table, it will pop up a new submenu, and this is where we can now record settings. So if I wanted to record my voltage, speed, uh, arm current, and torque, all I would need to do is click on record settings and select them accordingly. Speed, arm, and torque. Once you're happy, you can click OK. It's going to tell you if you change any of these settings, it's going to refresh the window. So I've got nothing, so I'm happy with that. And you'll see here, I've now got those four settings. To make the record, I just need to click on record and you'll see these values. If I was to now increase this torque setting 
2.4. Come back here and click record. It will now update those settings. Just take keep in mind where this blue box is, is where it will record from. So if I click over here and click record, it's going to put it to this line. So make sure that it's always back where it started and click record there. If you need to delete these, you can either highlight, press delete, or you can highlight, right click, and delete row. If you need to just change one, you can double click, change it from there. There is an exercise where you'll get negative torque values from the DC generator, and you will have to double click on these and delete the negative symbol there. I'm just going to change this again just to get a couple of settings. I'm going to record that. And just one more. Record. Whenever you record them, make sure you save them just by clicking the save, give it a file name, dt. Two one test save, but then it's also recommended that you do file export and call it the same name test, and then that will give you the LV sim format. So you can open this file again, and this will also give you a text file format like so. And you can use this in Excel now. The last main thing that you need to take away from this is how to make a graph. So in the data table here, you can see the graph window. If we click on that, we can see a graph appear. If we click on axis, we can now change this. So I'm going to make a voltage versus torque. And you can see here our voltage indicated on the left-hand side and our torque across the bottom. You can obviously change the scale from here if you make this manual. You can set the scale manually. I'm going to leave auto for now. You could also change the color of the items from here. Before you print anything, though, make sure you go Options, Graph, give it a title. So I'm going to make it Voltage Plus. Oops, T. Talk. My X axis is Talk. And my Y axis is Voltage. You can see now we've got a title as well as the axis is labeled. So go ahead, file, print, and save as a PDF. Once you're done with that, you can now close this window, you can close this window, and you can close this window. If you need to make any changes, you can delete these modules, change them, and then when you need it, you can just click on this again. So bring it up your full quadrant control, press start, and so on. If you need to change this to a prime mover, set this to clockwise prime mover. And now if I press start and turn the power up, you'll notice that this is now becoming my motor and this is just being driven as a dummy. So that concludes how to set up our metering window, how to set up a data table, as well as how to set up the graph.